Hey everyone, John here. Welcome back to another Sapphire tutorial. Sapphire 2025 includes the brand new Pixel Mosh Factory preset. And in this shorter tutorial, I'd like to walk you through how to work with that preset in both After Effects and in DaVinci Resolve. So let's take a look. Okay, so starting here in After Effects, I've got the main composition. And in here, I've got another comp called Pixel Mosh Factory. And this is made up of some text and the Sapphire logo there. So this is what I'm going to apply Sapphire Effect to. So I'll just do a quick search and apply S Effect and click on Load Preset. And because the new tab is selected, it's showing me all the great new presets in 2025. And I want to use Pixel Moss Factory. I could do a search over here, but I can just see it over here. So I'm going to apply that. And we've got this great Pixel Mosh look. Now I did actually do a tutorial recently on how to use Pixel Mosh with text and logos using the Alt Flow data source. And I suggest definitely watching that tutorial for an in-depth look at how to set that up. But when I was creating that, I was thinking there must be a way to use this in Sapphire Effect Builder to create an even more effective tool. And that's what Pixel Mosh Factory is. So I'll click on Edit Effect and let's break this down. All right, so with previous selected node selected, clicking on source, there's my source. And we can come up here and choose show checkerboard and we have got an alpha channel there. So this is a combination of two pixel mosh effects with different alt flow data sources and combined with other Sapphire effects, which allows you to create more complex looks really easily. And it isn't that complicated if you've seen some of my Sapphire effect presets, there's a lot of nodes, but this is actually fairly simple. And we've got one set of nodes over here and a duplicate set of nodes over here. And they're both going into the wipe pixelate transition. Okay, so let's take a look. We'll start by clicking on pixel mush one. Okay, so that's isolating just pixel mush one. And for the alt flow data source, I'm using caustics. I often use caustics as a generator. Very nice. For, for pixel mosh 2, so it's another pixel mosh effect, I'm using the aurora effect as a generator. Okay. And I'm going to just ignore the tints for a moment and the masks and come down to wipe pixelate. So in order to be able to combine those two, I've used the wipe pixelate effect. And at the moment, you can see wipe percent is set to 50. So if I drag it up to the left, we're only seeing pixel mosh one. And if I drag it all the way to the right, so the transition is complete, we're only seeing pixel mosh two. So you can use wipe percentage to isolate either one or the other, which is pretty handy. But if you wanna combine the two, which is what this effect is really all about, you can bring it to around 50%. And in order to see how each of the pixel mosh is affecting the text, I'm just going to change the tint color. So I'm going to just make one, uh, one green and make the other one, uh, you know, bright pink, something like that. Okay. So now if I click on white pixelate, you can see how that's being affected by each of the, uh, the different pixel mosh effects. Bring that to one side. We're getting more of one. Bring it to the other side. We're getting more of the other. And if you want to sort of feather that out, you can just drag this on screen display here. This is the edge width. And now we're getting probably an even better mix of the two. If I bring that really close, we get a much harder line. But here we get a more of a feather. So I'm going to just bring my tints back to the original. And come back up to here. I've used caustics, but you could use other Sapphire effects as the alt flow data source. So why don't we try something like Ultra Zap? So I'm going to hit tab and type in Ultra and Double click zap. And I'm just going to disconnect caustics like that. So there's my ultra zap. 
And if we click on pixel mosh, now we're actually getting this beautiful you know, tearing with the ultra zap bolt, which is really nice. And of course you could come in here and, you know, adjust this and also animate this. And you're going to get that kind of look. Now, of course, it has presets, so I could click load preset and, you know, choose something like 80s gem, which is more spiky. Load that up. And now we've got these really nice sort of spiky tears, or I don't know what you'd call them, but it's a very interesting look. And of course, you can come in and adjust the pixel moss settings. If you're not sure which uh, effects are the, well, which parameters are the ones that you work with, just check the, have a look over here and look at the check marks. They're the ones that are going to be appearing in the host, and they're the ones that work with Altflow data source. So, I've got a very small block size, you know, but I could increase the block size like that to get a really blocky look or just take one down and get a more stretched look on the uh, on the X. Reverse that, make it more on the Y. So there's a lot of flexibility. If I want a little less, I can just bring the flow warp scale down. So I'm not really getting affected too much by it. Maybe bring the block size down a bit. Like that. And this is also where I can use masking, right? So the mask is sapphire shape. And you can see at the moment it's completely covering the layer or completely encompassing the pixel mosh effect. So it's giving it 100% or it's affecting it 100%. But if we come into here and just bring this size down, bring it right down, and you see now we're only getting it affecting just that small area. And of course you could feather that too. But if I take that and just move it up, I can have it just affecting a small area. And if I only want this side to be the one that's actually working and this one to be the source, I can just grab my source and bring that into the background. And now I've only got a little bit of pixel mosh just on a small area of the of the text or of the logo. So you can go, you know, full out and use both and and you know have the transition uh 50% and the edge width really wide and you've got a mixture of two different alt sources, which is really really nice. Or you can just use one or the other and isolate it using the mask which is really nice as well. So it's a really clever and fast way to use uh, Pixel Mosh Altflow data source with your layers. And keep in mind, you don't have to use it with text and logos, you can use it with footage as well. So I'll turn this one back on. Just bring that and take this one and plug it back in. And with this one, I can grab the mask. You can see it's also very, very big. I can just bring it and just, you know, maybe just affect a small part of the of the text. Just like that. And once again, you could animate that as well, okay? So that could be animated through the text. And if you wanted to just colorize it a little bit, you could come in and play with the tint. So one side could be, I don't know, blue. Come across to the other side. Let's make that an orange. I've got to actually bring that across there as well. Like that, right? Grab my mask. Scale it up. You can see it's nice and fast. And combine them that way. And lastly, I've used pixel uh, white pixelate, but you could use other transitions. If you didn't want, uh, you know, the kind of sharper angular edges, you could try something different. Maybe something like wipe, uh, wipe clouds, for example. So I just drop that in there and then just connect these to that. Take that out of the way 
And at the moment we've got it on one for white percent. So if you just bring that halfway, we're getting a, a much different look there. Play with the frequency. Now, I haven't tried white clouds before, so this is just pure experimentation by me. Maybe a little bit dirty with the color there, so I'll just reset the color. Right click and reset to default. Like that. So we haven't got the, the hard, hard edges there. We've got more of a sort of cross dissolve look. And you may prefer that. But you can try all different kinds of you know, transitions that are included with Sapphire Effect Builder. So overall, it's easy to use and it's very fast. And I think you'll find it very useful when you want to add a little bit of you know, damage to your text logos and your footage. So let's take a look at how you can set this up in DaVinci Resolve as well. And here in DaVinci Resolve, I've got some footage. So I'm going to grab that and bring it down to video one. And I've got a PNG here of the same logo. So I'll just bring that in to video two and just extend that. Okay, that's all working perfectly. So come across to the color workspace and I want to be working with my logo there. So the first thing I'll do is apply S effect. So I've done a search there. So I'm just going to grab it and drop it into place like that. And load preset. Once again, grab Pixel Mosh Factory. And it's looking a bit strange, right? We need to give it a alpha. So quickest way to do that is to right click and choose Add Matte Pixel Mosh Factory PNG like that. And what we also have to do is right click in the work area here and choose Add Alpha Output and connect that. Aha, it all works as expected. Looking great. So then we just come in and we can adjust this by clicking on Edit Pixel Mosh Factory and go ahead and work with the effect just as we did in After Effects. All right, so hopefully you found that useful. To learn more about Sapphire 2025, be sure to visit BorisFX.com where you can also download a trial version. For now, this is John. I'll see you in the next tutorial.